Kidney disease accounts for over 40,000 deaths annually. About 30 million U.S. adults are estimated to have chronic kidney disease. Most of them are undiagnosed. Chronic kidney disease shortens life expectancy by 5 to 11 years. Over 200,000 Americans live with a kidney transplant. 100,000 Americans are waiting on a kidney transplant right now. Nearly 680,000 Americans have irreversible kidney failure or end-stage kidney disease, and they need dialysis or a kidney transplant to survive. Just like your drinking water needs a high quality filter, our bodies need filters to function properly. And that is where the kidneys come in. Kidney diseases are the ninth leading cause of death in the US. Chronic kidney disease is defined by indicators of kidney damage and decreased kidney function, meaning your kidneys are damaged and they can't filter blood the way they should. This particular disease is called chronic because the damage to your kidneys occurs slowly over a long period of time. In fact, 48% of people who have severely reduced kidney function are not even aware they have the disease. The damage can cause waste to accumulate in the body. Chronic kidney disease can also cause other health problems. There can be many causes for kidney disease. Just a few of them are diabetes, high blood pressure, infections or drugs that are toxic to the kidneys, certain diseases, disorders, or genetic conditions, or heavy metal poisoning such as lead poisoning. Since the incidence of kidney disease and associated health care costs are expected to continue to rise, identifying modifiable risk factors is a public health concern. So risk factors for kidney disease are diabetes, high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, smoking, obesity, family history of kidney disease, abnormal kidney structure, or old age. Drinking carbonated cola beverages have been linked to diabetes, hypertension, and kidney stones, which are all risk factors for chronic kidney disease. In fact, the results of this study were that drinking two or more colas per day was associated with increased risk of chronic kidney disease. Many people can have kidney disease and feel fine. Our kidneys have a greater capacity to do their job than we need to be healthy which is why you can donate one kidney and still remain healthy. You can also have kidney damage without any symptoms. Despite the damage, they are still able to do enough work to keep you feeling good. Really, the only way to know if you have kidney disease is to get them checked with a blood or urine test. As they get worse, you may have swelling called edema. This happens when your kidneys can't get rid of the extra fluid and salt. Other symptoms include chest pain, dry skin, itching or numbness, feeling tired, headaches, increase or decrease urination, loss of appetite, muscle cramps, nausea, shortness of breath, sleep problems, trouble concentrating, vomiting, or weight loss. Depending on the cause, some types of kidney disease can be treated, but often chronic kidney disease has no cure. Treatments usually consist of measures to help control signs and symptoms, and also to reduce complications and slow the progression of the disease. If kidneys become severely damaged, treatments may be needed for end-stage kidney disease. Those treatments include kidney transplant and or dialysis. Dialysis is a treatment to filter waste and water from your blood artificially. With all that being said, how can H2 potentially help this problem? We are gonna look at the most important topics when it comes to kidney disease and kidneys in general, and how molecular hydrogen can potentially benefit each one. First, let's stay on the topic of chronic kidney disease. Chronic kidney disease is recognized as having changed from a subspecialty issue to a global health concern. It's a global health burden with high economic costs to health systems. All stages of the disease are associated with increased risk of cardiovascular morbidity, premature mortality, and or decreased quality of life. It is also the leading cause of end-stage kidney disease. The conclusion in the study states that consumption of hydrogen water by drinking has the potential to ameliorate ischemia-induced cardiorenal injury in the chronic kidney disease model. This indicates a novel strategy for applying H2 water for the prevention of chronic kidney disease, cardiorenal syndrome. The next topic is all about kidney function. Kidneys have specific jobs they do in order to keep the body healthy and working properly. Some of these jobs include removing waste and extra water from the blood through the urine, as well as helping to keep chemicals such as sodium, potassium, and calcium balanced in the body. The kidneys also help the body to get rid of medicine, drugs, and toxins through the urine. They regulate the body's water balance by either holding back or releasing excess water. The kidneys control the body's acid-base balance as well. So they make sure that the blood doesn't become too acidic or too alkaline. And these are just a few of the important roles the kidneys play. 
Obviously, having adequate kidney function is essential for our bodies. There are markers of kidney function that can assess normal functioning of kidneys. If there is an increase or decrease in the values of these markers, it can indicate dysfunction of the kidney. Things like creatinine, urea nitrogen, and electrolytes are markers for routine analysis. Creatinine is used as a measure for kidney function. The creatinine clearance test is used to monitor the progression of kidney disease. Here we see hydrogen inhalation markedly reduced the level of creatinine. This study also demonstrated that hydrogen significantly reduced the levels of creatinine in the kidneys. The results of this study indicated that the urinary ratio of albumin to creatinine were significantly lower, and the creatinine clearance was higher in the hydrogen water group. The most frequently used marker for estimating kidney function depends upon the concentration of urea in the blood. Increased blood urea nitrogen is associated with kidney disease or failure. In this study, we see that the plasma urea nitrogen was significantly lower in the hydrogen water group. The results here also demonstrated significantly decreased levels of blood urea nitrogen. And again here it says hydrogen significantly reduced the level of blood urea nitrogen. Electrolyte panel is frequently used to screen for an electrolyte or acid base imbalance and to monitor the effect of treatment on a known imbalance that is affecting bodily organ function. In this study, we see that the electrolyte levels in the urine were elevated, but they were significantly decreased after the administration of hydrogen water. So what else does the research have to say about hydrogen and kidney function? Let's check it out. Here we see the treatment with hydrogen water attenuated the deterioration of kidney function. Here, pretreatment with hydrogen ameliorated kidney dysfunction by inhibiting oxidative stress and the inflammatory response. Here we see that hydrogen can promote kidney function after ischemia reperfusion injury. Here it says that kidney function was improved by hydrogen treatment. And here it says hydrogen has the ability to restore kidney function and decrease oxidative stress. And finally, to quote this study, therefore hydrogen has a therapeutic potential for kidney dysfunction in patients with type 2 diabetes and metabolic syndrome. So for the next topic, let's look at kidney injury, which can lead to kidney disease or decrease kidney function. It has been pointed out that oxidative stress and inflammation play a crucial role in the pathology of organ injury. Acute kidney injury is a prominent risk factor for the development of chronic kidney disease. This study goes on to say that hydrogen shows a protective effect in the prevention of kidney injury and could inhibit kidney fibrosis after ischemia reperfusion injury. Likewise, it says here that hydrogen water can inhibit the development of fibrosis in the kidneys. Here we see that this particular cancer therapy drug has side effects that are toxic to the kidneys. But the results of the study showed that hydrogen water protect against the kidney damage induced by the cancer drug. But wait, there's much more that the research has to say about hydrogen and kidney injury. Here we see that hydrogen acts as a novel therapeutic strategy for the prevention of kidney injury. The results show marked reduction in edema and hemorrhage in kidney tissue after hydrogen treatment. It concluded that hydrogen shows a protective effect in the prevention of kidney injury through anti-cell death and anti-inflammatory action in kidney cells. In this study, hydrogen was able to protect against acute kidney injury after a liver transplantation. In this one, hydrogen attenuated acute kidney injury induced by severe burns. Again, it was due to hydrogen inhibiting oxidative stress-induced cell death and inflammation. The results here suggest that H2 gas is effective at ameliorating the severity of acute kidney injury. The study concluded that the consumption of hydrogen water is a promising strategy to alleviate kidney injury. To quote this study, the findings of the present study thus suggest that daily hydrogen water drinking may offer an innovative approach to preventing cardiorenal injury and ischemic stress. And finally, this study says, our findings highlight the potential value of hydrogen as a new therapeutic method on acute kidney injury. Next is kidney stones, which can be a risk factor for kidney disease and is pretty prevalent. Each year, more than a half a million people go to the emergency room for kidney stone problems. It is estimated that one out of 10 people will have a kidney stone in their lifetime. Kidney stones affect people of all ages, including children. They are most common in people between the ages of 20 and 40. Kidney stones are small, hard deposits that can form in a part of the kidney. They eventually have to exit the body through the urine and sometimes be surgically removed. Kidney stones can cause some excruciating pain. About 30 to 50% of people treated for kidney stones will have another one within the next five years. And some get them even more often, so prevention plays an important role. One of the main risk factors for kidney stones is dehydration. 
This says that kidney stones are more likely to form if there's less water in the urine. Then the water isn't able to dissolve as many mineral salts. So not drinking enough fluids or sweating a lot can increase your risk of developing kidney stones. Of course, there's other causes and risk factors like diet and family history. But it'd be safe to say that increasing your water intake is a good start for kidney stone prevention. Cola beverages have also been associated with urinary changes that promote kidney stones. Crystal deposit in the kidneys have also been associated with oxidative stress. Here we see that the inhalation of H2 could successfully decrease calcium oxalate crystallization and protect against kidney injury. To quote this study, our findings demonstrate that inhalation of H2 reduced crystallization, kidney oxidative injury, and inflammation. And it may be a candidate agent with few adverse effects for the prevention of kidney stones. Next, we'll talk about hydrogen benefits for dialysis. Dialysis is a treatment that does some of the things healthy kidneys do. It is used for people with end-stage kidney failure, whose kidneys can no longer do what their body needs them to do. It is a treatment to filter waste and water from the blood. Every 24 hours, more than 300 people begin dialysis for kidney failure. Over 475,000 end-stage kidney disease patients receive dialysis at least three times per week. Increased oxidative stress and pro-inflammatory conditions are commonly enhanced in chronic dialysis patients and is associated with the excess morbidity and mortality seen in these patients. Dialysis may even exaggerate white blood cell activation and injury, which enhances oxidative stress and inflammation, which can lead to malnutrition, immune deficiency, repeat infection, and cardiovascular disease. Okay, so what does the research have to say about dialysis and hydrogen together? Well, first we'll look at this clinical study where it indicates that hydrogen water can be used in dialysis patients due to its stable characteristics, low cost, and strong antioxidant activity. To reduce dialysis invoked oxidative stress, pro-inflammatory cytokine levels, and atherosclerotic risk factors. The study found that hydrogen may diminish the infection rate of dialysis patients. The study suggests that hydrogen may provide an improvement and prevention of dialysis enhanced white blood cell death. The study also mentioned results of downregulating 26 pro-inflammatory cytokines after six months of hydrogen treatment. Hydrogen treatment was found to attenuate immune dysfunction that was caused by chronic dialysis. So is that all the research about hydrogen on this subject? The answer is no. This study says that applying an H2 dissolved dialysis solution could improve the prognosis of chronic dialysis patients. Dissolved H2 has also been studied in a clinical trial for its effectiveness in the prevention of chronic inflammation during dialysis. The study noted a reduction in blood pressure when treated with hydrogen. And here, dialysis symptoms of severe fatigue and severe itching were lessened with hydrogen treatment. It indicates that hydrogen dialysis could have substantial clinical benefits beyond conventional dialysis therapy. This study says that hydrogen water may have the potential effect to reduce dialysis induced oxidative stress. And finally, to quote this study, accumulating findings indicate that the use of an H2 enriched solution may prove to be a novel approach to ameliorate dialysis related complications. The final topic is for the final stage of kidney disease, and that is kidney transplantation. Every 14 minutes, someone is added to the kidney transplant list. On average, 13 people die each day waiting for a kidney transplant. The average wait for a kidney transplant is 3.6 years. The 10-year grab survival rate are 55 and 75% for cadaveric and live donor kidney allograft, respectively. The vast majority of transplant failures are attributed to chronic allograft nephropathy. Oxidative stress is believed to be a common pathway that leads to the development of chronic rejection in kidney transplantation. The results of this study says that hydrogen water effectively reduced oxidative stress-induced tissue damage in the setting of kidney transplantation. It goes on to suggest that hydrogen water can improve kidney function after a transplantation. Hydrogen water was also able to attenuate local inflammation in this setting. The hydrogen water treated recipients also exhibited a significant increase in survival. The study indicates that hydrogen water is a potentially novel therapeutic strategy in the prevention of chronic allograft nephropathy in kidney transplantation. Well, there you have it. That's how hydrogen can potentially benefit the ninth leading cause of death in the U.S. Stay tuned for our next and last video of this series. The topic is suicide, but we'll be talking over many aspects of mental health and how hydrogen can help. Until then, be sure to share this video and subscribe to our channel. And that's your dose of H2 for two kidneys two minutes.